time I was really young, I can remember sitting on the porch with my parents, listening to Abbey Road, and by the time I was about four years old, I probably knew the words to come together. So, in any case, um, that's part of the reason... Yeah. Okay. Alright, can I, can I restart? No, I okay. keep going. Okay, so in any case, I probably knew the words to come together, and I think that's the point, is the Beatles are super iconic, and what was supposed to be up here was a picture of the album cover of Abbey, of Abbey Road, but I'm sure you can all picture that in your head because it's just so famous. And, um, but the thing about it, and why this is important, is not a lot of people know that so much of modern music was inspired by the Beatles today. So that's what I hope to convey in this speech, is that so much of this is really, really important to everything that's happened. And um, one thing that, to do this, I'm going to discuss it in three different ways. I'm going to discuss the Beatles' history in Europe, then I'm going to discuss the Beatles when they came to America and the rise of popularity here, and then I'm going to talk about their overall impact on pop culture. So I'm going to start off with the Beatles being founded and beginning in Europe. They were originally founded by John Lennon in 1957 under the name of the Queer Men. Basically, the original members were John Lennon, Paul McCartney, George Harrison, um, Pete Best, and Stephen Sulcher. And basically, they played in a bunch of clubs and little, like, small-time gigs until 1960 when they began touring in Habsburgs. And Travis Barker, an expert in rock and roll history, basically states that in 1960 in these Habsburg concerts is when they began to find their unique sound that would carry them really far in, in their careers. So in 1961, Stephen would leave the band due to, health, due to health complications and he would later die in 1963. And in 1962, Pete Best would be replaced with Ringo Starr, leaving you with the four famous Beatles that we have, John, Paul, George, and Ringo. So in 1963, they released their, or at the end of 1962, they released their first single entitled Love Me Do, which goes to number 17 on Beatles pop charts, or on British pop charts, which is respectable, but nothing major yet. So, but in 1963, they released their second single and first album by the same name of Please Please Me, which basically goes to number one immediately and becomes a huge sensation in Europe, but it really, really doesn't do well in America. But it, this all changes in 1964, when the Beatles released their third single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, which does phenomenally well in both. So, which leads us into their time in America. Um, and basically, in their time in America, they become uber popular super quickly. And um, they are invited at the end of 1963 to play on the Ed Sullivan Show a number of three times, which is basically how they become so popular and so recognized so quickly. Um, shortly after this, in 1964, they begin touring. They start, they have their first concert in America in Washington, DC, their second one in New York. And then their first official tour, which goes, which starts in San Francisco and goes all through the country and up into Canada. Um, after this, they tour for a little while longer, but eventually they realize that they want to, be, to spend most of their time in studio. So for the next four years, from 1966 to 1970, when they break up, they make all their music in studio and don't tour, which allows them to really, really focus on their overall, um, on the overall sound and do more experimental things rather than catering just to people who would come see them. But in 1969, uh, John Lennon has problems with his contract and he unofficially announces that he's gonna leave the Beatles. And in 1970, Paul McCartney officially announces he's leaving the Beatles, meaning that they're going to, um, meaning that they break up in the end of 1970. So now that we've talked about the overall history of the Beatles, we're gonna talk more about like their overall impact on pop culture. And one thing that's super important to realize is the Beatles, were huge in inspiring other bands. Bands you all probably have heard of, Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, um, even bands like Nirvana, they've all taken different aspects of their sound from the Beatles, so that you can make the argument that they're like the grandfather of rock and roll sort of deal. Um, another thing that you can look at that the Beatles really, really did was they made movies, which were super important. They made four, the most famous one being Hard Day's Night, um, so they were really instrumental in using video along with their music. And this is important because a lot of people point to this as the precursor to things like MTV, which got popular in the 1980s, which was all about music videos. And then the last thing that you can really point to is, and this might be kind of a negative, but depending on who you are, but they were huge in making bubblegum pop because from 1966 to 1970, they actually had their own cartoon show, which was targeted from people, you know, ages children from like 8 to like mid-teenagers, 12 to 13. So, they were really big on like targeting that audience, which was a new phenomenon at the time, which inspired bubblegum pop. 
So overall, I think it's very important to recognize that the Beatles became what they are through different ways of marketing as well as just their unique sound and they inspired so many things. And today we've talked about the history of the Beatles, both in America and in Europe, and their, their immense impact on pop culture.